All right, so as usual, if you appreciate the content, if you like my theming, my writing of Linux, and all the great things that I do, like put together this nice picture here of this fat hamster on a, I guess it's a gnome book sort of thing. I don't know. <laughs> a gnome book makes up a MacBook. But anyway, this video is just going to be covering the three best OSs that I found on the Pinebook Pro. Well, not on the Pinebook Pro, that, but the OSs that can be run on the Pinebook Pro, my top three. And I'm just going to give a brief overview of the positives and the negatives. Because I think that this would be useful, you know, if you're viewing this and you're thinking to yourself, should I buy this laptop? There are some things that you should be aware of, you know, because uh, this machine, everything is engineered, right? And it does work, right? But if you think about installing Linux on a traditional laptop or desktop, you expect things should in general work, right? But one of the, the drawbacks of Linux or one of the things that you know the negatives that you'll find with Linux is that sometimes things do not work and you have to do a certain amount of research to get something to work right on the Pinebook Pro this may be added on top of that so what I mean is that if you have an issue here the uh, the amount of work that you would have to do on a regular PC might be even more effort than that so you should keep that in mind that this laptop is meant for people that don't mind having to fix things. And I guess it's not, uh, It's I don't know if it's really advertised that way. I'm not going to get into that sort of discussion. But yeah, just keep that in mind that things won't always run perfectly. But that is, you know, the nature of having control of your own software, your own hardware, right? Is that you sacrifice the convenience of a Windows PC or the illusion of convenience. I call it an illusion of convenience because in my opinion, there are moments in time where things happen in Windows and you Google forever and you will not find a solution. And this is most likely because this has not even been uh, probably debugged heavily by Microsoft themselves. Whereas in Linux, you can most likely find a solution at some point, right? But that's a biased opinion, but it's just my from my experience. Anyway, so on the screen here, we got a big hint as to the three OSs. If we look at the logo that we've got here, we got the Pine logo, got Manjaro, we have Arch, and then we have Debian. So let's start out with uh, Manjaro. What are the benefits that I see with it? First, when you buy this machine, this Pinebook Pro, it comes pre-installed with Manjaro, at least as of now. There's a lot of community documentation and feedback, so you can go online, you can find a lot of things. If you're having some issues, you can probably find something, at least someone else's uh, report of this issue, right? And maybe a solution. It's optimized, so when you boot it, it's very smooth, very fast. And I'm actually kind of surprised because it runs KDE. And KDE is very bloated, and to run on four gigs of RAM, uh, a six core CPU, you know, ARM CPU. It's it's quite impressive, right? The fact that you can boot it and it, it, it'll it get daily tasks done. Now, again, you're not going to be multitasking like crazy like you would on a real uh, full x86, you know, uh, PC, but it, it's still all right, you know? It's, it's, it's all right. I wouldn't say it's bad. Uh, the graphics are smooth. So from my use of it, the graphics were really nice. You know, I have no complaints. Now, here are the negatives, and I guess some of this is just Manjaro's issues as a whole, right? So the first thing, and this is the main reason why I left Manjaro on the Pinebook Pro. My my intentions were originally, actually, to keep Manjaro here because I was actually kind of impressed. But anyway, one of the biggest negatives of Manjaro, and this has happened to me before and not even uh isolated on the pinebook pro but on other hardware it can break and this has happened to me before and it's so frustrating because i don't do anything right i remember when my pinebook pro installation broke i had just booted my pc 
my Pinebook Pro, you know, after turning it off normally the previous day. And uh, when I went back the next day, I was greeted by distorted graphics. And it never booted again from Manjaro. So this is when I decided to wipe it. And I went to Arch Linux. So yeah, that's just one of the drawbacks for me is that it can break. And I've <laughs> the funny thing is that I've heard people say uh, Arch Linux can break. But for me personally, Arch Linux has not broken. Um, I've had moments where I've been, I've had to go into rescue mode. But it has never just done anything strange like that where the graphics just disappear and it does nothing at boot. Literally, I would... I would boot it and uh, it would go through the boot sequence and then it would just halt somewhere and it would give no feedback as to what was wrong, what it was doing. Again, maybe I could have debugged that a little bit, but, you know, to be honest with you, this has only happened to me in Manjaro, something so strange like that. But anyway, uh, I also think that on the Pinebook Pro, um, temperatures are higher. And this is just, you know, it's not, I haven't uh, used Manjaro in a while on the Pinebook Pro, so I haven't really recorded this. But I can say that uh, just from feeling the side of the, the, the laptop, uh, it would get really hot at times. And uh, I don't know exactly why, but I've read that it's overclocked by default. I haven't looked into that to see if that's true, but some people have said that uh the CPU by default on Manjaro is overclocked. And this is this may be why the performance is actually really nice on Manjaro. Uh, and this is a knock. The default desktop here is KDE. And I'm kind of confused why they would choose KDE when KDE is bloated. It, it has a lot of features. And to be honest, I don't know why you would run that on a low powered machine. So I'm not exactly too sure why this decision was made because you can take another desktop environment and make it beautiful, right? And make it look modern. It doesn't have to look really bad. It doesn't have to have tearing graphics. Just use a compositor, um, put a simple panel, right? You can put plank in there or whatever like I do and you can make it look nice and modern, right? So to me, this decision to use KDE is a bit off. But again, it could be replaced very easily, and Manjaro has many different uh, ISOs that you can try, so you're not really stuck at KDE. But this is the default. This is what it comes shipped with. You're told that this is the, um, I guess, the 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 most optimized OS, right? But yet they give you KDE. So I, I don't know. It, it's just not for me. But anyway, so on to the next one. Arch Linux here. So Arch, you know, I've got a huge bias for, for Arch because it's just, it's my favorite OS, to be honest. What are the benefits? You got the latest and greatest uh, software. And it's quite stable. You know, uh, that issue that I've had uh, before in the past with Manjaro just breaking on me, it has not happened to me on Arch Linux. Um, but anyway, I, I shouldn't talk about that in this. So... On to the next point, there's plenty of documentation of Linux in general, right? So, for example, if you're on there and you're trying to set uh, DPI, uh, it'll show you different methods of setting DPI. Some methods might work on one machine, they might not work on another. That's just an example of the great documentation that you will find in the Arch Wiki. So again, we've got tons of software, especially the AUR, and here is one of the great things that it's got is, again, the same as Manjaro because of the uh, relationship that they have. You know, Manjaro is a derivative. So we have Widevine for uh, uh, the Arch64 platform. So this isn't really packaged by default in every distribution. It depends on the distribution. I think uh, RMBN or Raspberry Pi OS, one of those has it already done because, you know, of course they support Raspberry Pi. It's so popular. A lot of people use it. And a lot of people might want to uh, do DRM playback. And uh, this is, of course, available because some geniuses reversed um, the software just recently released the DRM plugin uh, created by Google because Google made it. 
due to the fact that they have uh, new Chromebooks that are 64-bit. And since they want people to buy those, of course, you know, people might want to use Netflix, Spotify, things like that, and they need that plugin. So the guys here in, in Linux, they just reversed it sort of and patched it to work across uh, any Linux distribution, I guess. As long as you can patch the um, the required files, you can do this. So, of course, this is available on Arch Linux because, again, they host latest and greatest software, right? Um, so, yeah, this is another great thing about being on Arch Linux is that you're always on uh, the latest and greatest software, which to me, in my opinion, has always been very stable. I have never had a problem with the stable branch of Arch Linux. I've never gone into the you know bleeding edge uh, repositories. But the default repository, which is considered stable, I have never had a problem with it. And again, it's modular to the max. So whereas, um, I was about to say KDE, but whereas Manjaro takes you and you download some image, it has some desktop on there, you have to deal with it. On Arch Linux, the beautiful thing about it is that you build it from the ground up. So whatever software you want is what you have there, right? So. This is, um, I don't want to knock Manjaro, but for me, I don't understand what's the point of being there when uh, you can be on here. I, I kind of don't see the, the point in it, but I guess, again, it makes it easier to run Linux, right? Because some people don't want to deal with a black screen, right? That scares people. So I kind of understand why people wouldn't. Uh, want to go through the install process of Arch Linux. But yeah, it has a chance of breaking. Uh, but for me, again, this has never broken. Arch Linux has not broken for me. Uh, it might be difficult to install. And if you're on the Pinebook Pro, I would expect that most people that buy this would have some knowledge in Linux. So you wouldn't be uh, scared of making partitions, things like that. So you, you might be all right, but if you're a new user and you haven't really messed with Linux and you buy a Pinebook Pro and you try to go to Arch Linux, I think it might be harder for you than doing a regular install on an x86 PC um, just because of just the nature of, of it being, how do you say, not as, I mean, I wouldn't say not as straightforward. There are just certain things that, that you have to do um, that you might not have to do on an x86 PC. So, yeah. Um, it requires constant maintenance. So, yeah, you have to update regularly. And I'm not exactly too sure how often they recommend. I, maybe it's like every two weeks. Don't quote me on that. Not too sure. But, again, yeah, you do have to update regularly. But it's all right, you know. And, honestly, I like the updates. I like updating my, my PC. And I really the thing that I really like is the fact that I choose when I run updates i hate background updates i swear I, I i hate it i like opening the terminal and and typing um uh pacman syu i i like doing this or running gay or whatever so so anyway yeah to me this is a negative because i'm assuming if you're if you're just wanting to get the job done right quote unquote you you don't want to do this, right? You just want to turn on your PC, do whatever you have to do, and not have to worry about maintenance. Uh, again, just like Manjaro, I'm not too sure why uh, Arch Linux runs a bit hot. And uh, I I haven't investigated it, but I've read that the Manjaro edition is overclocked, and maybe this one is also overclocked. I'm not exactly too sure. I haven't looked into it, but uh, yeah, that's that that was a bit disappointing. When I when I found that, uh, and again, uh, this is one interesting thing is that the graphics driver is not as good as Debian or Manjaro by default. So I haven't really configured the graphics driver um, in the Pinebook Pro because the traditional way that I know how to do it just isn't working, and I'm not too sure exactly how to configure it if i'm going to be honest with you but what i know is that when i boot into manjaro or debian the graphics drivers on both of those are smoother especially debian debian is kind of amazing to be honest with you in terms of its graphic stability that i've found 
So on we go to Debian. So yeah, what what's one of the uh the points that it's most renowned for is its stability, right? Um you turn it on, you run it, it's extremely smooth, has very little bugs. I got to give them, you know, a lot of credit. I really gained a lot of respect because this is the first time I've ever used Debian and I understand why it's renowned for for being so stable and, you know, if you just need something that boots, always works, you don't care about being on the latest kernel or whatever, this is it for you. And on the Pinebook Pro, it runs extremely well and I'm kind of surprised because Whenever I see people do reviews of the Pinebook Pro, I usually see them stick to, to Manjaro, you know? And to me, out of all three, my honest opinion, Manjaro is the one you might want the least, in my in my opinion. And, I, and I'll get to that a little bit later. But anyway, there's lots of community documentation available on Debian. Um, and it might have better maintenance of software. And what I mean by that is that sometimes you might find some packages that have been removed or somehow deleted or moved to the AUR and you don't know this, right? And maybe there's some extra stuff you got to do there, um, but you may still find them maintained in Debian. And I found this with Simple Screen Recorder. Uh, this is a software that I use to capture video. Uh, it's no longer in the main repositories of Arch Linux. It's actually been moved to the AUR. And I just, I got it around that and I just built it from source on Arch Linux, which is okay, but you know, this is just, this is just something that might annoy some people. Um, the graphics driver, again, is optimized. And I was reading in the documentation, and I did a previous video on that, but just in their documentation, they use some open source um, driver for the ARM uh, processors. And it's gotten to a point where it's very stable and it, you don't need to do anything to configure it. It just runs. And for me, it's been running the best. Uh, video playback is actually a little bit better on here and a little bit smoother. And the temperatures run lower, which is very interesting. Uh, at least just from, I mean, I should really go in and monitor the temps, but just when I put my hand on the side of the laptop where it usually was really, really hot on Arch Linux or uh, Manjaro, here it's not the same. It actually runs a little bit cooler. And I think that this edition might not be overclocked, which is very interesting because the performance is still good. And I think that this actually might have to do with the fact that the graphics driver is uh, more optimized or I don't know. I feel like it, it runs better on Debian. I the, the only way that I can say that you will know this is if you use all three editions and then you play around with it and you try to do video playback, um, just opening apps, the animations and things. If you're on a desktop, you will see this. At least I did. Um, so, yeah, what are some of the downfalls of putting this on the Pinebook Pro? So there were several uh, images that I found and the only one that works for me is the one that I manually built. And I also did a video on that recently, just showing you how to uh, build this uh, small netbook image, which is really cool because it was really lightweight. Literally, you could have like a one gig uh, USB stick, not like they make those anymore. Everything is at least maybe, I don't know, four or eight gigs. But yeah, you could put this on any small media and it runs and you can install uh, Debian through that. Uh, so yeah, that's just one negative that I found is that I had to use that one image that I built. Uh, it doesn't run the latest software, which is really, you know, it's like a, it's like a trade off, right? You can get the Netflix stuff, you know, through the Widevine 64 very easily on Manjaro or Arch, but here on Debian, it's actually uh, I haven't found an official way of doing it. I mean, it's Linux, so I I'm pretty sure that there is a way to do this, right? But I haven't found an official way or a documented way of getting Widevine 64 running on the 64-bit platform, which is a little bit sad because I think that Debian would be perfect here if not for this this one thing here that it's not running uh, or it's not um, sorry officially supported yet or someone hasn't done it yet um to allow drm playback in the web browser so yeah just one negative here and some things are not optimized as well as is on manjaro so 
uh, for example, the speakers on Manjaro, people complain that they're too quiet, but there's a reason why they're too quiet. And that's because if uh, they're not capped like that, they get really, really loud. And um, I was trying to see what happens because they're extremely loud, right? And you think, wow, those speakers are... They 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 they've got some kick to them, but they didn't have that on Manjaro. But weird things start happening, like uh, on the display whenever I crank up the the volume that high. So I'm pretty sure that it's it's uh probably best what Manjaro did, which is try to uh, how do you say limit the the output of the speakers uh, to control that, so you don't have that negative impact. Because for me on Debian and Arch Linux, whenever I crank the speakers up, sometimes I have some strange things happening. So, yeah, that's just one of the negatives here. Some things are not optimized as well. But in general, I would say Debian is extremely good on the, the Pinebook Pro. And again, if you're thinking about buying this, it's not going to be like the traditional machine where everything in general works. So let's just recap. Uh, we have Debian here. And... I'm really surprised by how well things work because I've never used Debian as much as I have now. And I really like it. You know, even the install process was not too difficult. Uh, even the, the little netbook image that you make when you, um, not netbook, sorry, netboot image that you make when you install this, it even has an installer. And in this installer, you have many options. You can configure what desktop you want, time zone, everything. You can do everything in there. It's just, text-based but it's very good it's very convenient and uh you know you can make a minimal system so me myself i made a minimal system here with uh with debian and i really enjoy it you know it's it's working great i have absolutely no complaints um again the drawback is that you're not on the latest and greatest software but this is not what debian is made for uh but you do have that great stability and performance. So I would say if you don't care about being on the latest, greatest software and you want your machine to function and function very, very well, you should go with Debian, to be honest with you. Uh, the one thing that scares me, I forgot to mention this in the negatives, is that in the past, at least with Ubuntu, when I've gone through uh, distribution upgrades, things have broken there. And I've seen that happen before. And I'm afraid that if I keep this on here, if I keep Debian on my Pinebook Pro, when I eventually have to upgrade to the next after Bookworm, it might break. And then I'm just going to be like, oh my God, why did that happen? You know, I wouldn't have to deal with this on a rolling release or whatever. So yeah, that's my one concern. But I've never gone through Debian and use the release like this. So, but in my setup currently, what I have is a 256 uh, gigabyte SD card with Arch Linux on it, and then on the EMMC I have Debian. So you can have the both, you know, the best of of both worlds, right? If you want something that's stable, Debian on on one hand. If you want something that's bleeding edge or uh, latest and greatest, you got uh, Arch Linux on the other. So yeah. And the second one here that I've got is Arch Linux, of course. And uh, as said before, if you want to be on the latest software, you've got Arch Linux. And there's a lot of documentation. The install process, yeah, it's a little bit difficult sometimes. Um, but once you get over the install process, it's actually very easy. It's not difficult at all. Uh, you shouldn't let that stop you from trying Arch Linux. The only thing is, is that there's always that potential of things breaking, but for me, I've never really had that happen. I'm sure it can happen though. I'm not saying that it's impossible, but um, if you're in general very careful and safe with your machine, it probably won't happen. And I'm pretty sure that it's broken a lot with um, just changing configurations, right? Because you have to modify things when you want to get things done. But uh, yeah, if you want the modular experience, everything from the ground up, 100% Arch Linux is the way to go, I think. And uh, Manjaro, you know, Manjaro's in a weird space, right? Because they don't, I mean, they do offer latest software, but it's not as latest as Arch Linux. But they're not as stable as I would say Debian is. So Manjaro's just in a weird space, to be honest with you. 
Uh, I guess the biggest positive that it has is that it comes installed here. So it is the 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 OS that I'm assuming they would recommend you use, right? Uh, but uh, for me, I just, I don't know. Strange things always happen on Manjaro. I don't like that they include KDE. Um, but so a, a lot of fixes have been done and a lot of optimization has been done specifically by the Manjaro team. So if you're looking for that, then probably Manjaro is what you should use. But for me personally, if I were to get this machine again, you know, and I know everything that I have now, I would have just removed Manjaro from the beginning and I would have put uh, Arch Linux or Debian, you know? And in my honest opinion, there are just two choices that you have. You really have Arch Linux and Debian. So if you want to be on the latest and greatest and you like tinkering and things like that, just like I do, you like configuring things, go to Arch Linux. Um, because if you really want what Manjaro offers, which is everything done for you and everything perfectly working, you could just do that on a regular PC. Why do you, you know, is a, the Pinebook Pro really necessary when you can just get a uh, cheap laptop that's used, right? And you could slap on Linux on there and everything will work, right? And it won't be a pain. So I think that Manjaro is an odd place, right? Uh, but for Arch Linux, I think it makes more sense, right? You get to configure everything from the ground up. You you build everything. You make everything how you like. And you might struggle at times with the Pinebook Pro, but most likely you can get things done. And Debian here, it's just very stable. It'll boot. It'll work. And it's optimized pretty well for the Pinebook Pro. The only thing that I've found that isn't is... Uh, the uh, well, not optimize, but just I guess configures the speakers, All right? So you have to kind of keep that in mind whenever you're uh, using the speakers. But they sound they're not they're not that great to be honest with you. They're kind of tinny. So why you would out output them very high is beyond me. Uh, I usually just use a Bluetooth speaker and uh, I avoid this problem. But yeah, so far for me personally, Debian and Arch Linux have been the best. Uh, the only downside of Debian is that Debian does not have uh, the DRM plugin available. At least no one has uh, published a way yet. Because I've been looking for it, but I have not found anybody that's published, you know, any files or documentation on how to install that plugin on a uh, 64-bit uh, ARM Debian. So, yeah. But anyway, I hope that if you found this before you purchased your Pinebook Pro or if maybe you purchased it and you're thinking about which OS you use, that you found this useful because I would have found this tremendously useful uh, just to know a general idea of how things may work. Um, and if you did find this useful, please give a like and a sub because the fat fluffy red ham so really appreciate it. We're almost uh, at a thousand subs and that's kind of amazing because I remember when I started this channel, it was literally uh <laughs> probably like every few months and now it's every day i get like one sub which is really cool so i'm eternally grateful to everybody that has been following me and i have not forgotten the people that have been here since the beginning so i really am grateful for everything and i hope that you found this useful